Anyways, that's a technical definition of money laundering, but there's another type of money laundering that I, I think nobody talks about. Nobody talks about, nobody discusses, because another word for money laundering is money creation. Hello everyone, welcome back. This episode's another drive along in my truck. Alright, let's get up here. Today's raining. Uh, it's actually the day before Labor Day, but uh, since it rained on the 4th of July, my community is having a uh, fireworks today, which I'm hopeful that they may or may not do. I'm not sure. They sent out an email saying they're going to go ahead and uh, do the fireworks today. I'm a little skeptical about that, but you know, we'll see. Well, anyways, I, I got the truck with me today, so I'm driving the truck. And I'm going to do a Harbor Freight run. Yeah. I'll roll down the window just a little bit. It's not sunny today, it's raining. It's a windshield wiper a little bit here. There we go. I think I have some rain X in the windshield wiper, so that's what I'm doing. Turn the lights on. All right. Well, I hope you're all enjoying the videos I'm making. Yes! I recently did a vertical video of me riding the uh, Red Rover. And at the ending, the outro, I had a nice little dance scene going for a while. A little dance part. Had a chance to see that. Oh man, it's supposed to rain all day. I don't know how they're gonna have fireworks. They're supposed to have Labor Day celebration. It's a makeup to make up for the 4th of July rain out. So uh, on Labor Day, they have a, a gathering, a concert, fireworks. But it's raining. They they still plan on having it. We'll see how the day goes. I'm planning on riding the bike if they do. If it still rains, um, this gives me an opportunity to uh, retest or test out the uh, basket bags, the small and the large basket bags. See how uh, rainproof they are. So that is an opportunity for me to do that. Also, check out the rest of my rain gear and everything. I'll most likely be wearing the white jacket. I got the hood out of the collar. The hood tucks into the collar. So I unhooded it, uncollared it. And so I'll be uh, able to put that over my head. Put on the clear glasses. So the reason I'm going to Harbor Freight is, is to get some some gloves actually they got some new pair of gloves and I know that it's fall and winter is coming they have some high visibility reflector gloves a yellow and orange and they got the little reflectors on the back of the hand I think that might come in very useful um, because most of most of winter and fall is in the dark where the Sun will be setting much earlier six o'clock and plus they set the time back again so or is it forward I'm not sure I think it's they set the time back do they set the time back anyways there's a time change as well as the sunset change and sunrise change so I will probably be wearing more things that are high visibility and reflective and uh, also it's going to be a little colder, so I got to keep my hands warm while I ride the bike. 
Now, it doesn't snow out here in Houston. Not that much, anyway. It, it has snowed. It snowed three times since I lived here in the past uh, 10 years. I think I've been here for 12 years now. So, it snows. I've seen it snow. <laughs> but, typically it doesn't. But it does get cold, if we're lucky. Sometimes it's in the nice 70s during uh, December. Sometimes it gets a little humid, kind of weird. Anyways, I think uh, for the holidays I'll be headed somewhere. I'll be headed uh, in the southern... No, well, I'll be headed south. Yes, more south than, than Houston. Get away from, I guess, the cold weather. And get to a, a fairly warmer weather, if that's possible. I'm going to take the back roads to Harbor Freight. I found a little shortcut using uh, riding my bike. I think I'm going to use that same shortcut, except I'm going to take the roads, of course, and use that same shortcut to get to Harbor Freight. So, man, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with making these videos here. As you can tell, as I talk, and I, I put up a lot of text and images, and, and uh, some, to some degree, some animation. I hope you like the animation. You know, it, it takes a lot of work to put that, put a little five-second animation together. It's amazing, and some music. Got to find the right. Well, I wouldn't say the right music. You know, uh, part of my challenge or or the challenge I have for myself is, can I just take, you know, the footage I have with some photos and and animate them with some music, copy fr copyright free music and can I actually make something that's kind of entertaining, fun to watch? And uh, I'm turning on the, uh, the, the front defroster here. Just want to blow some air on it so it gets some circulation, doesn't fog up. And so uh, that's that's kind of challenging as a, uh, I guess, as a creator, or as an artist. I guess I can call myself an artist now. You know, just living life is an art. So if you're if you're still alive and and you're breathing and you're still living through it through it all, I guess you're an an artist in some ways. Your own genre. Some people get really critical and all uh, you know, superficial into into the arts. In my opinion. Okay, just my opinion. I'm not saying that you are superficial, but some people are. And you know what the arts are really about? Like when you get up to like museum kind of art, it has nothing to do with, in my opinion, it has nothing to do with the art itself. Some, sometimes it does, but I think it's, it's become so obtuse and ridiculous that the art really doesn't become the art is really not about the art or the artist. It's about uh, money, <laughs> money, transferring money, store of value, and in some ways, um, money laundering. Now, the technical definition of money laundering is to um, basically hide the source of the income, source of the funds. That's technically money laundering in, in a uh, criminal act. So proceeds from crime would be money laundering by definition. Oops, I hit the curb. Sorry about that. I was on the curb there. Anyways, um, so that's the technical. I was looking at the turn off my windshield wipers and I hit the curb. Great. Anyways, that's a technical definition of money laundering. But there's another type of money laundering. 
that I, I think nobody talks about. Nobody talks about, nobody discusses because another word for money laundering is money creation. Now, originally how money is created out of thin air is basically someone generates a number, all right, and puts it on a piece of paper and then gives it to you and uh, you're left to believe that you've gotten something of value when really you've gotten nothing. And then other people are convinced that what you have, money, currency, has value, but really you were given nothing and then you have to pay back that money with interest. Now the interest is where the money is created and where is that money, where is that created money coming from? It's coming from your sweat equity, your hard work, your time and effort. And there's never enough money to pay back your debt. There will never be enough money to pay back your debt. There's always a shortage versus the artificial demand created by interest. So that's how originally money is created. But the other way to create money is to launder money. Now this laundering of money is actually a legal form of creating money. And you're essentially what you're doing is you're recycling cash and you're taking another store of value. Now typically it's been a material product or a service or it could be your sweat equity in some ways. Um, as long as you're able to do something you're able to launder quote-unquote launder money. Uh, but essentially you are in essence and in a secondary market creating money out of thin air and essentially that's that's what you're doing for the most part you're just creating money out of thin air and all you're doing is recycling the existing cash typically people use bank accounts to uh, to store money and then that's the number in the computer system that goes up in value but the actual amount of cash in circulation never changes actually some in some cases it decreases so uh, you know when when you create money and you learn about money creation you you you, you all of a sudden you start asking yourself some very fundamental questions why do you work for a living if you can create money out of thin air once you learn how to create money out of thin air second is why does this even exist because really there is no there is no money there really is no money there's this time and effort that you've put in that you were ignorant about when all this time you can actually create money out of thin air and enjoy your time. Enjoy your time because time is definitely limited. I guarantee you that. That's a guarantee I can safely make a bet on and win. Time is limited and that's what you're giving up. You're giving up your life. You're giving up your time for money which is worth nothing. Anyways, I'm almost at Harbor Freight. I just want to make a point. You can create money out of thin air to infinity. Once you learn how to do that, you can free yourself and you can move up the hierarchy. You got food, security, a home as your base. Once you move up to that, then you start worrying about money. Then after you move up above money, then you start going into you know, self-awareness, transcendence, the arts, culture, um, society, stuff like that. Something greater than you are. And that's, 
that's the the pyramid now most people think about the pyramid like a Ponzi scheme or some weird stuff but really uh, you know when I think about pyramids or the triangle of the hierarchy I, I think of you're transcending into what I would what I would call your true self where you're freeing yourself and, and from from I guess social constructs uh, or your preconceived notions and once you're able to do that you can truly be what you want to be it doesn't matter how many likes you get how many videos you make or how many people watch your videos how popular you are it has nothing to do with that it's something that you want to do and you can offer and you can do it you don't have to be patronized by anyone you don't have to be told what to do or how to do it or when to do it you don't feel obligated you can truly truly leave something for others if you want to if you want to I feel like I I should because it's uh, if I knew if I knew sooner I would have lived a much better life um, that's just my opinion I would have lived a much better life but I guess better late than never anyways uh, I'm back here at Harbor Freight oh man can't wait to get my goodies my goodie bag from Harbor Freight anyways I'll park over here oh yeah get my goodie bag uh, what free item am I going to get today uh, I don't know I think I want to get another uh, man it's either a tarp or a moving blanket I think I'll get another moving blanket because I got another paneer bag I want to stuff that into. So, all right. See y'all later. Bye.